What's going on, Jerome's? Skull Twins. It's right in your face. Uh, you can take your streak and shove it up your butt. There you go. That's all I got. Uh, but when the Minnesota Fighting Vikings signed blocking tight end Josh Oliver this offseason, uh, there was a lot of people like, oh, why are we picking up the Ravens' backup tight end? Oh, he was behind uh, Andrews, and he was behind Likely and, and all that stuff. Why? Why, why are they doing that? Boo, crazy. Boo, boo, boo. But – I, I love Josh Oliver, man. First off, he is literally the largest human being you've ever seen. And in terms of tight ends, yes, yes. Also, he bought into the culture very quickly, although the beer chug was a little bit slow. Uh, Hawkinson's was fine. Nick Muse's was very damn impressive. Johnny Munch's sort of went off to the side. It's kind of funny, man. And also, I, I respect uh, anyone who pays homage to Prince's haircut. Uh, just let you so glow. I should bring that back. I Frankly, I don't think I can do it. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. But uh, through four games, Josh Oliver, uh, Josh Oliver has been sublime uh, for the Vikings, especially getting that running game going over the last two games. Also, he's shown that he's more than just a blocking tight end, caught himself a touchdown against the Chargers, which is beautiful to see. And he's getting some respect. So PFF, uh, so PFF tweeted this out on September 27th before week four. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Highest grade tight end in the NFL. Yes, he was. And yes, he still is after a stellar game uh, against the Carolina Panthers. Although... That holding penalty that wiped out uh, the J.J. touchdown and then the next play was a pick six. A uh, little bit rough. But uh, so far this season, uh, Josh Oliver has been just mauling in the run game, especially the last two games. And uh, we talked about the the – what 12 personnel does to defenses where you have Hawkinson and Josh Oliver on the field at the same time where defenses have to choose. If they're going to stay in base, we're going to throw on you. Uh, if you're going to play sub package, we're going to run it down your damn throat. And that's exactly what's going on, man. And also like they, they do trust Oliver on Island. Sometimes, sometimes he, like he was uh, squared up against Brian Burns one-on-one, uh, -on -one, which is very rare uh, for a tight end, but uh, Josh Oliver can certainly do it. And so far this season, uh, he is PFF's number one grade at tight end overall at 89.5. Not bad for a dude who well, like, like catches two ba two passes. That's all. Uh, but 83.7 run blocking grade, second in the lead behind Dallas Goddard, who I'm thoroughly convinced Goddard's run blocking grade is only high because of the brotherly shove. Because he's usually the guy on the side just like, hey, I'm run blocking. Ooh. Uh, but here's where you need to take PFF with a grain of salt and put everything in context. So his PFF pass blocking grade is 62.9, which would be 68th uh, in the league. Not nice. But also you look through his true pass sets. He's at 15, but he's a lot of zero sacks and zero pressures. So, uh, I mean, what more does he need to do to get a higher pass blocking grade? I guess they have to be prettier. That whole thing. But either way, uh, when they put Josh Oliver on Island or if he's in one-on-one -on -one spots, like he is good to go. And, it's just beautiful to see, man. Like, I understand why they went with the – why they went in terms of smaller offensive linemen uh, trying to go with more of an outside zone scheme. But I want to get back to Mullen, man. I want 330-pound guards. I want a 320-pound center. Love Derrissaw and O'Neal. They're good to go. And then I, I, I just want Josh Oliver in line. And, you know, Josh Oliver being an inline blocker doing a lot of the dirty work. Hawkinson is a competent blocker himself, but he's not on Josh Oliver's level. And Josh Oliver, just like how Josh Oliver is not on the receiving level uh, of TJ Hawkinson, although Oliver is pretty damn underrated, and he was a receiving tight end coming out of San Jose State. So I, I just think it's beautiful what's happening right now. Uh, and I, I know that there was some sticker shock, you know, three years, 21 million bucks for a blocking tight end. Uh, but Josh Oliver – he, he doesn't do the sexy work, and he doesn't do stuff that's going to show up in the stat boxes most of the time, but he's a big reason why the Vikings offense uh, is getting its head out of its ass. Love me some Josh Oliver, man. He's, he's repping 84. Yeah. My, Michael Jenkins, Chad Beebe, uh, Cordero, every, all the greats who wore 84 before him. He's representing, man. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.